welcome to the Terrence Cash Show. Our very special host is Terrence Cash. He's the chairman and founder of Greenlight Corporation, a group of companies, um, and is a seasoned serial entrepreneur, accredited private investor, coach, author, philanthropist, with over 25 years experience and success in business. And uh, as a result of years of study um, and best practices, he helps people uh, around the country to create wealth. Let me go off script and just say that um, he started um, in many ways, like myself, as a college professor, um, which was very a very status position. Um, however, as those of you who might be educators know, it doesn't make a lot of money. He then went on to build from his basement a multi-million dollar business, a $30 million business, and then sold it. Fortunately for us, one of the things he wanted to do next was cheer what he learned. Um, let's welcome Terrence Cash. How are you? Now I'm going to start you off with our, our topic today is hidden um, secrets of protecting your assets. Um, first question, first of all, how did you get into the business of money, wealth, and coach? And <laughs> I'm sorry, how did you get into the business of money, um, business, and wealth coaching? Well, Coots, that's a good question because I didn't originally get into the business of business, money, and wealth coaching, what we call BMW coaching. And by my lack and my journey and all of the tremendous mistakes I made, you know, there's an old saying that experience is what you get when you don't get what you want. So I got a lot of experience in my previous entrepreneurial journey. As Cooch mentioned, uh, 25 years ago, I started a computer business, IT consulting and system integration firm. And that business languished for a number of years. I made every mistake in the book. I think I invented some mistakes and then made them again and again. And so that business languished. But I was blessed and fortunate to not only learn from my own mistakes, but I was mentored and coached myself personally back then by millionaires, multi-millionaires, mega-millionaires, and at least two billionaires. And uh, those folks were kind enough to give me crumbs of wisdom. They were kind enough to give me uh, pearls of insight, instruction, and knowledge. And over the years, I've met thousands of those folks, and I accumulated and, and garnered thousands of crumbs of wisdom, and I baked a cake. And that cake is the green light proprietary success formula that's called no personal gain. And everyone here is going to understand why that particular name was chosen for uh, the approach framework and the strategies we do. But it was made for ordinary people, entrepreneurs, and we actually have some eclectic solutions for uh, nine to five working folks who are just trying to get relief from the rat race and to run their life as a business. Now, um, tell, in terms of your business, your clientele, I, I know that you have the clients to come in and then you charge and they pay a thousand dollars an hour. Um, we're not going to talk about them right now. But what do you have for the fifty thousand dollar people that have that? Do you have a program that can help them protect their assets? Let me back up a little bit because I want to give a follow-on to what are the mistakes that people make to protect their assets. Number one mistake, and this is principles from no personal gain. The number one mistake I see from people who are uh, not doing the right things and protecting their assets is they are facilitating, they're quarterbacking their financial affairs as human beings. Now that might sound strange, it might sound uh, counterintuitive, but the mega rich, the ultra rich, do not facilitate their affairs as human beings. Let me give you a little bit more. Two types of people on the planet. So this is what I learned from the rich and the successful. You have living people and you have legal people. And the rich exploit, manipulate, and control legal people to their ultimate financial benefit. 
When I say legal people, guys, I'm talking about the group of artificial people that includes estates, trusts, LLCs, and corporations of all people like every one of you in this room. Matter of fact, exactly like everyone in this room. They're right and protected and privileged under the Constitution of the United States, exactly like you. No difference. They have all the benefits, advantages, and recognitions under the clause of the great state of Florida or any other state in the union, exactly like you. So they are equivalent to you in every way. But here is where the fork of the road happens. As it relates to money, they run circles around us. The wealth creation system puts human beings, that's what I said, at a great and severe disadvantage as it relates to money. So that's where people start. So if you don't start there, then you go down the slippery precipice uh, to not reaching your full financial um, uh, goals and your full financial potential. So first and foremost, that's the first rule of protecting your assets. What happens when you sue someone rich? What happens when you sue someone rich? Absolutely nothing. Why? Remember the old saying that the rich own nothing but control everything? Now, to me, that made no sense, guys, up until about 15 years ago. How can you own absolutely nothing but control everything? So that's when we put the third part of that that brings it all to life. The rich own nothing but control everything through artificial people, legal people. So the legal people own everything. And the rich control the legal people, so they control absolutely everything. Matter of fact, the only trillionaires on the planet are not breathing. They are the, it's part of our life revisited tour conference at Roadshow. Greenlight goes around the country and gives uh, free discussions and talks. This is probably one of our more premier discussions and talks. Again, thanks to everyone who made this possible uh, here at the Citrus Club. But the main takeaway is, one of the, one of the uh, questions I ask is, give me the names of five people, and it's $1,000 in cash, to the names of five people who are the richest people on earth. And I'll hear Bill Gates. I go, he's very rich, but that's not what I'm looking for. Someone will say Warren Buffett. Someone will say Carlos Slim. Oprah Winfrey. So Oprah Winfrey is rich, but she's not even the richest the first three people we mentioned. Ultimately, no one answers the question. Because again, it's conventional thinking. The rich don't think coups like people who are aspiring or people who are middle class or unfortunately people who are of lowest means. They have a very, very empowered and enlightened mindset. They have a holistic and a complete perspective and they have a very productive relationship with money. So that's, that's what everybody should remember when you're protecting your assets. It's all about mindset, perspective, and relationship with money. And that's part of the green light system. We look to enhance your mindset, broaden your perspective, and change your relationship with money, whatever that is. That's the only thing separating you from the people you admire or maybe even envy financially. So to protect your assets, that's where you have to start. You pretty much got to the point of the first rule of wealth creation is to protect and keep what you already have. So that's where you start, guys. If you can't protect and keep it, if you made $250,000 a year, if we can't protect that $250,000 a year, no sense talking about a million, two million, five million, because unfortunately you're going to give it away. Give it away to the tax authority. You're going to give it away to credit, vendors, clients, frivolous lawsuits, right? Can you say superstar athletes? You know, they say that men lie, women lie, but facts, figures, and numbers never lie. So let me give you a fact. Average NBA basketball player, not a LeBron James or Dwayne Wade, makes $5.15 million a year. That's average. That's a guy that's warming the bench. Fact, 70% of them will be broke even before they retire. These guys are millionaires, right? And we know that many players make a whole lot more than $5.15 million a year. Can you say movie stars? Can you say popular recording artists? 
and other celebrities, many celebrities. These people are rich. You see, wealth creation has a lot less to do with money. So again, it goes back to your relationship with money, your perspective and your mindset. If you have the right mindset, perspective, and relationship with money, the money is going to show up, show up at your front door in significant amounts. And so we start there. We help you protect and keep what you already have. Again, non-conventional systems, non-conventional approaches, counterintuitive. You have to know, first and foremost, we're starting with getting you out of the picture. That's what we call it, no personal gain. <laughs> The rich don't personally gain anything. Uh, real quick answer. Ten years ago, I was invited to uh, join Donald Trump's country club up in, it was up in Yorktown Heights. It's brand new. It hadn't even opened yet. And whether you like his politics or not, let me give you some facts. Now, these are inside facts. These are not things you're going to read on the paper. I will give you a place to Google anybody that finds this video. It's worth $250 to me. But for the last 20 years, up until recently, has run for the presidency, a couple things. One, Donald Trump didn't even file a personal tax return. Now, he's all going to be worth more than $4 billion. How is that possible? Number two, the king of real estate, up until recently, didn't own a stick of real estate. Again, these are things that should make you begin to change your perspective. So if you've got a multi-billionaire, and up until recently he had to file for taxes because, you know, he's running for president, it's going to be full disclosure. He didn't, have to, he didn't have to complete a tax return because the rich aggressively avoid income. See, there's different types of money. Not all money is income. So the rich aggressively avoid income. This is why uh, Warren Buffett can say he makes, he pays less in taxes than his secretary. Now he's talking percentage-wise, obviously, guys. This is why Bill Gates, for numerous years, while he was CEO and chairman, now he's still just chairman of Microsoft, paid himself four hundred thousand dollars. Bill Gates couldn't find any more money. This is a multi-billionaire. He's been a billionaire for twenty-five years plus. And he paid himself only $400,000. And if he could have got away with less, he would have. He had people working for him that made five, seven, ten million million. So again, this is part of the perspective that hopefully we're going to bring out tonight and we're going to answer the questions. But I wanted to add a little more light on that. Okay. Before I open up the floor for questions, I hope you guys are ready for this. Um, there's a, when we talked last week, we talked about a myth. The myth was that the people that made the most money were smarter than the people that weren't. Of course, many of us in this room have been told that in order to become successful, we need to get a good education, and then we'll become successful. Could you explain that? OK. I love higher education, so our educators in the room, our people with PhDs in the room, don't get mad at me. My undergrad, so my trade in education, my undergrad's in electrical engineering, so I'm a tech guy to begin with. I got my master's in comp sci, computer science. So, I started out, actually, Cooch kind of went into the middle of the story, but when he said I was at on faculty, which is true, but I started out as an engineer and moved up to the ranks as a W-2 uh, employee, a major uh, defense contractors all around the country. I had an FBI secret security clearance. My specialty was military electronic support aircraft, B-1 bomber, B-2 bomber, and it was a uh, radar countermeasure system. So that was my specialty. So I was making eighty or ninety thousand dollars back in the 1980s. 1980s, I was in I was in my company already. So in the eighties, I was making so that's pretty good money, right? Back in the eighties, that was a lot of money. But the, in the old days, in your good old days. But uh, the problem is, or I should say, the challenge or the situation is that it's not about intellect. I have seen cosmic failures of people who graduated magnum cum laude with MBAs from Harvard, Yale, and all the major schools. It has nothing to do with money, or very little to do with money, guys. I have seen tremendous days of companies that started with 10, 20, 30 million dollars in stock cash, managed and run by brilliant people, crash and burn. The statistics you see for business fatalities is not limited by education. 
or by how much money they got undercapitalized. So the capitalized companies, the companies that are run by very smart people, fail with the same frequency and the same statistics as the guy who barely got out of high school. Matter of fact, it seems like most of the people who do really good are what? The college dropouts. Right? Right? Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, you know. Um, so, you know, I'm like, are anybody getting degrees that are becoming billionaires? No, it's not. So, the point I'm making is intellect, money. Do you need it? Should you be at least of average intellect? Absolutely. Money, should your business be capitalized? Absolutely. It's the mother's milk of business, which is one of the second solutions we offer. We're all about capital raises and acquisitions, as well as infusions of cash into uh, businesses. Uh, great teams, great products, marketing strategies, all those things are great. But you know what, guys? They add up at their height no more than 20% of your financial trajectory. The other 80% is contained in these hidden principles that we're getting into tonight that I gave you a few of. We're going to get into as many as we can have time for tonight. Uh, that's 80% of your financial trajectory. So if you're at a point, you're probably at 20% of your zenith of your highest point. I don't care how many millions of dollars you're making, wonderful, God bless you. But you're probably not at your full potential in terms of your trajectory momentum. So intellect and all that's important, but that's 20%. The other 80% are hidden, they're counterintuitive. And like I said, we start right off the bat with letting you, changing your mindset and perspective. That if you want to go down the road of wealth, you better have a significant relationship with an artificial person, okay? Otherwise, who are the only people that, look, let's talk about definition of income. What's the definition of income for everybody in this room? What's the definition of income? Salary, or every dollar you get, right? Every dollar that touches your hot human hands is income and therefore taxable because only income is so now you know why the rich aggressively avoid income. That's why Donald Trump hasn't paid. Trump or this, he's paid the minimum legal tax. Okay, he paid the taxes, but he paid the minimal legal tax. Five years ago, Cooch, there was a New York Times expose. Uh, I didn't think it was so, so much of an expose. It was all about how the rich don't pay their fair share. Now that's not news, right? And so they went into this exhaustive piece, and the takeaway was, that the rich pay little to nothing. But the emphasis was on most of the rich pay absolutely nothing. The minimum legal tax. Where unfortunately, a number of you in this room probably are paying the maximum legal tax. Okay? We're talking about protecting assets. We're talking about the tax ban. Again, I always take the tax ban last because it's controversial. We don't want to seem like, okay, you must pay your taxes. Don't go to the IRS or the great state of Florida and say, Terrence Cash, or my friends at Greenlight said, I have to pay the taxes. Because you, you won't be properly quoting me. You have to pay your taxes, but you're only obligated to pay the minimum legal tax. You're going way above and beyond by paying the maximum legal tax. You're not considered to be any more patriotic, okay, by paying that fee. So it's all about the minimum legal tax. So protecting your assets, one of the major drains on your wealth is taxes, the tax authority. In his book, Ziad, Ziad Abdel Noor, who uh, was a, a, the son of a Lebanese uh, parliament uh, member, a number of his family were in the parliament, Kuj, he runs a $10 billion, a little $10 billion hedge fund in, out of New York. And Ziad's book, Economic Warfare, I encourage everybody to read it. You know, it's a page turner. You know, it's a little technical, but it's a page turner. They gave this fictitious example to show you the illustration of how taxes will erode your wealth over time. So they have this fictitious example, it's not real life, where if a dollar doubles every day, okay, and if you got 10% interest, right, which you know we're talking about, you know, maybe we're talking about those two things, right? So, so in one case, 20 years later, that would be about a million fifty-four thousand dollars. Then you take that same investment that's doubling every day, the same interest rate on it, you're making 10% interest, but now with a modest 33% tax 
rate. I'd say 60 or 70 percent of the people in this room, between state, local, and federal, are paid north of 33 percent, right? You guys know, you look at your numbers and you go, ah. you know, you look at the gross, you go, wow. And you look at the net, you go, whoo, whoo, whoo. this is going to be tough. So you go that second route, and you have, after 20 years, drum roll, $28,000. A difference of a million dollars. So in one case, I am a millionaire, right? In the other case, I wish I was a millionaire. I wish I knew a millionaire. Somebody help me out, okay? So just that example tells you the corrosive effects of taxes. Just on that uh, front alone, you could fret away what considered to be a million dollar fortune, right? A difference of a million dollars. So you, we start with these concepts, these philosophies that you have to start manipulating your financial affairs as a, as an artificial person, as a, a as a legal person. They have all the rights and privileges you have. They have none of the detraction. And as it relates to money, it's the only show in town. You know, it's the only show in town. OK, now, we're about to open up the floor. Uh, let me make this announcement so everybody um, understands and is on tape. Um, Terrence Cash is not representing himself as your lawyer or your financial advisor. His answers are going to be theoretical. Get a lawyer, get a financial advisor if you don't have it. But some, you know, one of the reasons that I um, am invited uh, Terrence is after listening to his presentation, I realized that sometimes you don't know what you don't know. So unless somebody's in the room to help you to figure out, it's not, not asking the right questions. It's even knowing what the questions are that you need to be asking. And um, there are no dumb questions on the topic that we are talking about today. Um, so my question to you, does anybody, we're, we're going to sort of Start this side room and go that way because of the technical reasons. Does anybody at this table have any questions? And I'll bring the mic out to you. Jonathan Blount, light count for our first question. Terrence, my life experience has taught me that I actually have come to the conclusion that financial intelligence and financial literacy has been intentionally kept away from those who need that information. They teach you everything in the educational system but how to acquire, accumulate, manage, and maintain and sustain money. Is that true? Jonathan, I appreciate that question because that question is at the heart of what Greenlight is all about. It couldn't be more true what you said. The system, and the system is not, don't think it's a racial thing, guys. It's an economic thing, okay? Because if you are not on the radar screen, then you don't exist. If you don't know these principles, which are counterintuitive, if you if, think about it, if you tell the average person you can't operate or facilitate or quarterback your financial affairs as a human being, they're going to say you need to increase your prescription, right? You know, you need to get your head examined <laughs> because they're going to think you're crazy. But that's exactly it's hidden in plain sight, and that is intentional. Okay, because again, going back to what Jonathan just said, the literacy and the understanding of these principles is the biggest legacy a rich family, a rich person can give their kids. That's in essence why they give away, there's tax benefits for that, they give away their fortune, right? Most of the mega rich, they give away, because it's structured in a certain way, guys. They get tremendous benefits from giving it away. Mm -hmm. But the kids end up with, let's say, let's say 10%. So if you're a billionaire and your son or daughter gets 10%, a lot of people look at that and like, wow, he's being cheap. I mean, the guy's a billionaire. It's his only son. How is he only going to give his child only 10%? But that 10% armed with these principles, that person is a force to be reckoned with. So it's all about literacy. It's all about uh, uh, asking the why. You know, again, going back to what Jonathan said, most higher education, again, intentional, Jonathan, 
absolutely true, focuses on the how. How to do this, how to do that, how to do the other. And again, I'm all, all for higher education guys. But they don't teach the why. And so what ends up happening? People who know how end up working for or making less money than people who know why. So Greenlight's approach is all about the answers to the why. Again, is it nice to know how? Absolutely. But you better know why if you want to be the person holding most of the money at the end of that transaction. Otherwise, your pockets are going to be hanging inside out, and the guy or the gal that knows why is going to have most of the money. And so that's how it works. So yes, uh, Jonathan, the intentional, systematic, not racial, but economic um, uh, 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 illusion of what's important and priority and what's not is at the center of why we do this whole tour in the first place. You know, and why generally, why well, we haven't charged in two and a half years. Not one dime. We go on the road and spend, <laughs> we spend a lot of money and then we come down to the local economy and let's put it this way, we support the local economy. Okay, some walls get burned down, so if you see fire engines going, then you just say, okay, green lights in town. We, we have a good time, but it's all about empowering each and every one of you. Whether we have a coaching, report relationship with you, with you, which we would love, or you just leave here tonight further empowered, I'll feel like I've done my job in terms of helping you get on the road to financial freedom but you have to have a mentor. And again, and I'm talking to our people of color in the room. You're black, you're brown, you're beige. Um, you need mentors, you need a coach. I have a coach. Every year or two, I get a high-end coach. I just finished up a two-year uh, coaching relationship with Dr. Uh, Julian Sturt. You wanna know what Julian Sturton is? He coaches people who run billion dollar enterprises. He coaches the uh, ambassador general of the United Nations, the, the CEO of Shell Oil. And of course, he's not cheap, okay? Um, but coaches have coaches. He doesn't coach me on the whole BMW thing, business money and wealth. He's a leadership coach, he's a strategist. He changes my perspective to help be a better coach for my clients. And, and again, we have to invest in ourselves. So again, going back to Jonathan's point, if you want to have true literacy that's not in the same traditional vein, look, doing what you've always done will get you what you've always got. So if you're getting what you want, don't change a thing. But if you know there's a little bit more in the tank, if you know that you can reach even higher financial trajectories and momentum, then it's worth your time and effort to you know, solicit uh, and acquire a coach. There's only two ways to succeed, and it's all about wisdom, right? If you want to succeed, how many people in the room are, 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 are business owners? Pretty much 80% of the room. There's a lot of success elements in business, right? And we all know, no matter how successful your business is, it's not easy, right guys? You guys make it look easy, and the people who observe you say, wow, they envy you because they don't see all the hard work and the dedication and the sacrifice and, of course, the money you put into the business. You know, maybe your credit got distressed when you first started the business. But the number one approach and success factor is you must acquire wisdom. Two ways to acquire it. You can go through the school of hard knocks, right? Very expensive. Probably going to end up as a statistic. Right? And so that's where that 70 plus percent of all businesses, not some, not many, of all businesses fail in the first couple of years, right? Um, or you can get it through a coach, right? You can get it through a coach. So that's a lot more uh, cost effective, less disruptive to your life and money, and uh, you're going to be more successful. Because in order to keep a business, and business owners who've been in business for years know what I'm talking about, you need to know the future, right? You need to know the future, what's around the corner. How can you know the future if you're just super intelligent? That's a great trait. If you got great capital, that's wonderful, but 
You can burn through capital. I've seen it uh, many times. Oh, uh, you got a great team, a product, all that great stuff. But if you don't know what's around the future, if you don't know what's around the corner, what's in the future, you know it's going to limit your chances. The Fortune 500 companies keep recycling the same 500 executives. An executive at the Bisco will come to IBM. He doesn't know anything about computers, but he knows the stuff I'm talking about. Okay, that combined with his uh, top flight team of Harvard and Ivy League League school uh, MBAs who know how produces a juggernaut, right? IBM. Uh, Lou Gerstner left Nabisco, knew nothing about computers. This is like 15, 20 years ago. He didn't even have a personal computer in his house. IBM has not seen that stock price since Lou left. They went to the height over the whole history of IBM. They have not got to that stock price height. And this is the guy who knew the food business, cookies and, and other things. So he didn't have to know how. He knew why. So first thing you need to do is acquire wisdom. Again, you might have subject matter experience in your field. Your coach may not have that subject matter experience. But he'll bring the different perspective to you to get you to the next level. Uh, we like a lot of sports analogies at Greenlight. You know, being where BMW coaches, we like sports analogies. So for you sports fans, any basketball fans in the room? OK, few. You guys might recall when Kobe and Shaq first got to L.A. together. They were in L.A. for three years. No Phil Jackson yet. How many rings did they win? Zero. Uh, who said? Then you got Phil Jackson. He was, what, 60 years old at that point? I'm sure he wasn't running up and down the floor, right? He got there the first year. What happened the first year? Chip. Chip, and then they got a number of more. So, the buying into the philosophy and success formula of a coach is very important. Phil Jackson talked to Kobe, he talked to Shaq, he said, you guys are tremendous specimens, tremendous athletes, tremendously talented, but you're never gonna win a championship. So you can be tremendously talented and be in the human highlight film every night, or you could follow my advice and insight and win some chips. My name is Serena Anderson. I'm actually a program manager for Lockheed Martin. So I actually, when they were reading your resume, I actually sounded just like mine. <laughs> Except for that millionaire part. <laughs> so, we're going to change that tonight. So my question is, what was the turning point for you? What was the point where you said, hey, you know, I've got the experience and everything, and I want to branch out and make green life success? Great question, Sabrina. Um, there were three turning points for me. First and foremost, I got laid off from my job. I can tell you right now, the swashbuckling and, uh, business money and wealth coach you see now, that's not where I started, y'all, 25 years ago. My knees were shaking at the time. I was married. I had, you know, a mortgage and two cars, and my, my oldest son was probably about two years old, and I got called unceremoniously into the vice chairman's office of the company I was working for and told, you know, I'm being laid off. Now, first and foremost, Sabrina, I was very confused because I just brought in $2 million in uh, project revenues just six to eight months earlier. I was like, well, take it out of that. Take it out of that. Take it out of that. They weren't listening to me. So, my, so what I did was my first motivation, Sabrina, I'm sorry, guys, was revenge. Was revenge. I'm going to show them. You need something that's going to move you to where you're either going to win or you're going to die. Notice I say try. You either do or don't do. There's no such thing as try. You're either going to do it or you're going to die. But you're not going to, you know, feed up. Failure is not an option. So that's what got me there. So first was revenge. Then as I was bumping along and languishing and eating ramen noodles, I never want to see another box of ramen noodles ever again, ever. You can do some very innovative things with ramen noodles, guys, which I'll share with you if you care to hear the important thing. Ramen noodles can be like rice, you can make it like linguine, but I'm, not, I'm only being partially humorous. So, I got tired of the languishing, but just because you're sick and tired of being sick and tired doesn't mean things are going to change. 
But as I began to get these principles, and one thing I'll mention to everybody, this was a subconscious and subliminal thing. What I'm telling you now has been beautifully, uh, cohesively coordinated and brought together and properly languished and simplified. Back then, it was just the rich guy told me to do this, so I'm going to do that. You know, or the rich lady told me to do that, so I'm going to do that. And I might not do the full execution of it, and I go, well, it didn't produce what you wanted. It was good, but and what, did you do it on a Thursday, under the blue moon? No, go back. And so I go back, and so I had a little laboratory to, to experiment with these principles. It wasn't until I retired and cashed out to eight figures 10 years ago, because I'm 53 years old, as this past August, um, that I said, how in the world did you do that? You weren't rich. You didn't have the complexion for the connection, right? You didn't, y'all know what I mean. If not, think about it, it'll, it'll safely come to you on the way home. So, didn't have the complexion for the connection. Didn't have any money. Didn't have any money, y'all. No money. You don't need money to make money. Stop believing the lies. You don't need money to make money. You need money to make more money. You can make millions of dollars with little to no money. And you can go through the pages of newspapers and magazines and go on the internet, you'll see thousands of examples of people who made millions of dollars with little to no money. So don't tell me you need money to make money. That's a racket. That's a background conversation. You need money to make more money. So you can start with little to nothing, bring it up to a certain level. At some point, you're going to say, I, I need some money, y'all. I'm at half a million. I'm at a million. I can't make a dollar more because I need to hire people and da 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 But you don't need money to make money. You need money to make more money. So at the end of the day, Sabrina, it was being laid off. It was languishing and saying, you know what, I need to be mentored. And again, it was kind of like Robert Karasaki's journey. Only he had one rich dad and one poor dad. His poor dad was biological, the rich dad was his neighbor, right? Well, I had one poor dad, my father, my biological father, he was a, um, a bus driver for the New York Transportation Authority for 25 years. Um, and then I had thousands of rich dads and rich moms. And that made the difference. And that's what this, 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 this whole system is all about. It's the accumulated, streamlined, and simplified uh, uh, secrets of the rich. So, so that's what got me there. It was kind of like three milestones. And, uh, and uh, they all had a different motivational <laughs> level. OK, let me see if there are any curious people at this table. Uh, somebody uh, snuck up to me while you weren't looking and gave me a question for me to ask you. So where can we find all these hidden principles? Okay. I got two choices for you. So listen very carefully. Great question. Whoever, who, who asked that question? Okay. Oh, wow. She's shy. What's your name? Annette. Annette. Okay. So where can we hide, find these hidden principles? Here's the thing, Annette. You will never hear me use the word information. And anybody that comes to me if, and to Greenlights, we got 27 world-class professionals that work for and with Greenlights, um, we don't give you information. We give you knowledge. We give you wisdom. We give you insight. Why do I stay away from the word information? Information is cheap and voluminous. Most of the time it's free. Here, that's the good news. The bad news is you got to pull it all together. So. Annette, if you went to the internet, you can find all this. Um, you look very young, Annette, but I don't think you will survive that journey because it's going to take you about four or five hundred years. Because the truth, guys, is in ten million places. I'm just saying that number. It's a big number. The truth is a little here and a little there and a nugget there and a, and a, and a germ there and a principle there. And so it's worse than trying to find a needle in the haystack. Because at least you know you're looking for a needle, right? And you know where is it? In a haystack. So it's like I said, and then, uh, you, want, you, want the, you want the truth? You want the secrets? Uh, just go over there when you find a free needle. Like, bring what here? And where? Yeah, go over there. 
Look for it, find it, and bring it back. Look for what? Look for it where? So you don't know where to look, and you don't know what you're looking for. So it will take you hundreds of years to get the accumulated secrets of the rich, unless you have a guy, right? I'm not going to be hiking through the Himalayas without a guy. I can read all the YouTube, I can look at all the YouTube videos, you know, Himalayan hiking, done easy. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Got it, I'm, I'm, you want to do it? Let me know how it works out. <laughs> Send me some pictures. Okay? I'm not doing that. I'm going to pay a top flight guy a lot of money with his team of llamas, right? They always got the llamas, right? You know? And whatever else they got, dogs, and they got the food, and they know the terrain. And now, I'm ready, because I'm trusting him. I'm not going to try to do that. CTC, cut the check. I'm pretty handy around the house, believe it or not, guys. You never know it from, you know, my housekeeper and all the other things. I'm pretty handy. Mama Cash did a good job. She raised me right. I can cook. I can clean. I'm not cooking. I'm not cleaning. Okay? I'm not washing. We got a little mini fleet of BMWs because we're BMW coaches, right? They're all Alpine white. I'm not washing the cars. I'm not doing either. It has nothing to do with arrogance, pride, ego. Because remember, I told you they're not good for business. It's because those who are less enlightened trade their time for money. The more enlightened, coded, rich, trade their money for time. Time is infinitely more valuable and expensive than money. I trade my time, I trade my money for time all the time. Okay? Because Bill Gates, one of the perennially richest men on the planet, right? He still got the same 24 hours you got, right? What do you think he would pay? to get an answer to 8 hours or 10 hours or 12 hours out of a day. He would pay his whole fortune because he could make it back 10 times over. So back to Annette's question, you get a coach, you get a mentor, you get a guy. You don't try to do it yourself because while I could probably fix a leaky pipe. <coughs> that was my next question. How can I get a coach? Well, you're talking to one. <laughs> that might not have been obvious, right? <laughs> Thank you, Annette. Wow. Thank you for coming to the comedy hour, Terrence Kay. I'm up here to tell jokes, to give educational. This is for entertainment purposes. They almost told Coop to put that on the disclaimer. 